Hello, my name is Art Hamilton, and I am a lifelong resident of this community, the Matthew Henson Homes. This is the place where, as a boy, I grew up in South Phoenix and learned about friendship, learned about family, learned about values. You see, this is the first place that was built in this city specifically for African Americans. Over the next few minutes, we'll tell you why these homes were built in the early 1940s and how this neighborhood built an incredible bond between residents. And today, while these original homes are being torn down, rebuilding and rebirth are taking place for the next generation. Residents are celebrating both the past and the future. African Americans have lived in Phoenix since 1868. By 1900, 150 African American families resided in Phoenix. Most of these early settlers relocated from the south to the west for opportunity and freedom. Instead, they often found prejudice and discrimination. The city's minority population were primarily African Americans and Mexican Americans who had to live in the south part of Phoenix because it was the least desirable place to live. Living conditions were awfully poor. Homes often lacked plumbing and heating. The Great Depression brought hardship to all, but especially to minority workers. During this time, however, a housing reform movement began in Phoenix to assist the poor. It was led by a priest, former council member Calvin Good remembers. Father Emmett McLaughlin was a Catholic priest who lived in that area, and he's very involved in the community, and it was he who helped to form the housing authority, and Matthew Henson uh, housing was built. I'm one who believe in affordable housing for all citizens. With his strong belief and faith, he voiced concerns about poor living standards. Legislation finally passed and federal grant money was awarded to build the first community in Phoenix and the Valley for African Americans. It made headlines. The Matthew Henson Homes near 7th Avenue and Buckeye. The project was named after well-known African American explorer Matthew Henson, who co-discovered the North Pole in April 1909. This housing development was designed to create a sense of community with its center courtyard and front porches. My whole first 22 years of my life was in the project. I'm, I'm born August in 1940, and uh, we moved in the projects February 1941. The project was you know, my life. Um, I, in fact, I never went anywhere uh, other than the Grant Park and Harmon Park and the Boys Club, which they were all within four blocks from where we lived. I felt real safe because this lady lived right back of me called Sophie. She lived up the street there. Well, she was my backbone. Anything got wrong with me or sick or anything, she was right there. I knew every family that lived in the project at one time because we would go from house to house and then they had a playground by each apartment. So we would all just meet in each other's uh, uh, playground and play. Many call the Matthew Henson Project's home, and they have wonderful, warm memories. Everybody watched everyone's children, and you knew you had to stay in line, and we just had such, you know, a good time. Matthew Henson Homes provided security for so many people, both young and old. Stan Grimes remembers growing up in this community and remembers his father working closely with Father McLaughlin. My dad was uh, was raised in that part of Phoenix um, most of his life. Uh, um, my father's involvement with the projects 
was he worked for the founder and developer of the of Matthew Henderson. He worked for Father Emmett McLaughlin at uh, St. Monica's Mission. His responsibilities were to uh, assist uh, Father Emmett in his traveling around the state and also to California to the Catholic Diocese to help secure money to purchase the property where the mission is today, which is St. Pius, and also to, to uh, put the proposal and purchase of the land where Matthew Henderson was built. Father McLaughlin was a special man who cared deeply for this community and he gave back. Father Emmett's mission, and we had a movie over there every Friday, Cost to Dime. But uh, we had movie theaters downtown, which was a little bit different. You know. But, but uh, every Friday we'd go to the Father Emmett's mission and, and, and pay a dime for a movie. Father McLaughlin also founded Phoenix Memorial Hospital and supported the first nursing school to accept African-American students. Many of these students first attended Dunbar Elementary School. This school has uh, been around for many generations. It opened in 1920. Um, it has hosted several generations of families here. And more recently, they've um, received some, some notoriety over the fact that they're an excelling school. Uh, they have done quite well, and their scores are within the top ten in, in, in the state of Arizona. Many students who attended Dunbar furthered their education and excelled professionally. One of them is the late Clovis Campbell Sr., the publisher of the Arizona Informant, the first newspaper about the African-American community. I was the first black elected to the state senate, and I wasn't too pleased with the news coming out of the daily newspapers about the black community. It seemed that the only news that the daily paper could print about the black community was bad news. So my friend I knew had this paper, and he had stopped publishing it. So I bought it from him. And the Arizona informant was born. We shall overcome someday. It was now the 60s, and African Americans in Phoenix fought a long, hard battle for civil rights. Many residents from the Matthew Henson community helped shape events to bring about change. For Nell Coleman, organized a rent strike against the housing authority to bring attention to residents' complaints about poor living conditions. And it was a successful one. And uh, they called on me, being an accountant, to uh, keep the records. And we turned the money all in and accounted for every penny. The rent strike occurred before Phoenix took over the Matthew Henson projects. The city made necessary improvements, and a recreation center was named after Vanell Coleman. A lot of things have happened over the years. Children have grown up and raised their own families. Some have stayed here, living in the homes where they grew up. Others have chosen to move away. Things change. Time passes. But one thing is constant. Matthew Henson will always live in the hearts of those of us who lived here. In 2001, the city of Phoenix received a $35 million grant from HUD to modernize the community. Almost 300 families had to be relocated. This is what the Matthew Henson Hope 6 project will look like when it's completed. It will include this three-story senior building. The proposed new housing will include 611 homes, which is a gain of 239 units. A month before groundbreaking, Former residents gathered for a reunion to catch up on old times. <laughs> Former resident Mildred Fulbright Moore organized the event. I got a committee together. I started putting out letters, I started putting out flyers, contacting people and see if they would support me on this. And my goal is to keep it going as long as we can 
so we can keep that Matthew Henson project history on the map. I was trying to figure out where my house used to be. My apartment. I feel kind of sad because the Matthew Henson was my home. We started out there when I was a little bitty girl. And my mother passed away and, uh, and she was living there. The original Matthew Henson buildings may be gone, but the memories will live on forever. I think a lot of us forget where we come from. We have those that have climbed that ladder, that ladder and don't want to look back or down. So hopefully this event can bring that unity and love and support that we should have for each other. This is where, when I first came from, uh, I'd say Nashville, Arkansas, well, this was the first, you know, apartments and things that I came to. And it seemed like home. D. Wheeler Cronin is the project manager for Hope Six. This day is about, it's about bringing families back together that, that are, have scattered since having lived here um, back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So, so many of the families here right now for this event <laughs> are coming together because they try to get together and, and talk about the old days and what Matthew Henson means to them and that's what's so important. Many residents at the reunion had mixed emotions about the construction. I hate to see them being torn down but I know that it's time for updated uh, renovations. I mean because everybody needs more modern conveniences these days. And these, these apartments still have no doors on the closets, you know, so, yeah, it's, it's time. It's kind of sad in a way. When they told me they was going to tear down the project, that just kind of hurt my heart because all the good memories are there. All the people that, you know, started out as being young, they all stayed in the project and we had a lot of fun. I've seen people here today that I haven't seen like in 20, 30 years. Yes, actually that long. Oh, reminiscing, you know, from the old days, the good old days. I'm just seeing a lot of people that I haven't seen in years. Some I don't even recognize. Some don't recognize me, I'm sure. But it's just fun getting together and remembering the past. The past is long gone, and the future is now. One, two, three. Rise up in splendor, rise up in splendor, rise up in splendor, your night has come. I'm excited that this does represent exactly what my administration, this city, and all the levels of government represent. Diversity, inclusion, residential, commercial, business, nonprofit, this is what this city is about. It's about a heart and a soul in the very heart and soul of our city. We know that families who live in stable housing have, have children who are better able to perform in school. They are safer and they have better futures. Many people contributed to make this project a reality, and there are many people to thank. This is a dream of mine. This is something that my office worked very, very hard to accomplish. Former City Councilman Cody Williams says when he served on the council starting in 1994, it was hard for people to think about positive change for the area. It wasn't easy for me to convince a lot of folk that we needed to go after the Hope Six uh, opportunity. As a matter of fact, the Hope Six opportunity had been around for as long as I was on the council. But efforts persisted and other supporters came on board with just a, a number of organizations that once we started having the conversations and started talking about what Hope Six meant and that this was not an effort to gentrify or get rid of people who were in the public housing projects but to make their living environment healthy again. Uh, people just started to, to join uh, and, and become a part of the process. Councilman Michael Johnson secured matching grant funds for this video project. 
He understands it's a sad day since we're losing a piece of history. It's an outstanding thing for us to be here and see something which we always know has been a neglected area now become a significant part of the operational function of the city of Phoenix because when these projects were built, this was not part of the city of Phoenix. It was some of the last part that was out here in the county and some of the last part that was incorporated. Some Matthew Henson units are being preserved for historic value. One is where Councilman Johnson's grandmother used to live. So that means that I will forever be able to come back and say, you know what, my grandmother used to live right there in that apartment right there where she grew up and I came and stayed with her uh, for a short time and attended school. Charles Lucky lived at Matthew Henson for three years as a young boy. He worked as a physical education teacher for 21 years at Phoenix Indian High School. He recently came back to look at the construction. I'm impressed and enthused as to what's going on. I, I think it's a step in the right direction. I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out. Another longtime resident, Ollie Gordon, is looking forward to the revitalization project. Well, I think it's very exciting, but I hope that what it is that we all can be together like we did years ago and not just everybody watched everyone's children and you know you had to stay in line and we just had such, you know, a good time. The goal is for the good times to continue as families move back into the Matthew Henson community. People without vision is a people without hope. And, and this Hope 6 project helped us to take the vision that we had uh, pulled together collectively and to really start to put it into action. You remember the scripture say, don't move me from my old landmark? That's what I don't want. I don't want them to move me. And if so, just move me across the street over there and put me in another building, but don't move me from my old landmark. I just love here. Well, now you've heard our story, and now you know why the Matthew Henson homes were so important to those of us who lived here. But as the Hope Six Project rises from the ashes of Matthew Henson, like the great bird which gives this great city its name, we know that those who come after us will have the same kind of great memories of their community that we had at Matthew Henson. It was a great place. It will always be a great place in the hearts of those of us who lived here.